Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session, Tell the World About Your REST APIs, Benefits of a Centralized Developer Portal. My name is Michael Brahm. I'm a senior sales engineer with Intersystems from Germany. In the session today, I'd like to introduce the Dev Portal, which is part of IIM and all its features to you. And after this session, you will be able to configure it, to upload content to it, and to secure it. Let me tell you about a conversation I recently had with one of my partners. I met with Joe. Joe is head of development and Joe implemented a lot of APIs to support a new business model of the partner. The partner wants to monetize his APIs. And Joe asked me, Michael, now that we have built all these great APIs, how do we tell the outside world which APIs we have and how to use them? And I said, Joe, this is a great question. You can leverage the dev portal, which is part of IAM, to document your APIs and to expose them internally and externally. And what you see here in this screenshot is a documentation of a sample API of the Great Burger and More service API. And what you see here is a list of the available endpoints. You see the HTTP method, which is needed to call this endpoint. And the dev portal can do a lot more for you. Wow, this looks great. But how do we get there? Well, getting there is a two-step process. In the first step, you create a specification or specifications for your APIs. And you can leverage one of the InterSystems IRIS REST APIs to generate the specification or specifications from your existing APIs. And in the second step, you upload the specifications to the dev portal. And the dev portal now is able to display documentation and you can expose this documentation externally and internally. And the dev portal can do much more for you. Okay, but how do we control the access to the portal? Does it mean that everyone who has access to the URL of the dev portal automatically has access to our documentation and the documentation of all our APIs. And I said, no, this is not necessarily the case. The dev portal supports role-based access control and you can enable authentication for the dev portal. In this example, you see basic authentication is enabled, but there are other options for authentication available. You will see them later during the session. And then you can create roles and add developers as members to these roles. In this case, you see a role GS, Global Summit, and an admin role, administrative role. And then you can grant permissions or privileges to these roles. And every member of a certain role has access to the specifications or the documentations where you have granted the permission for this specification to the role. And for example, in this case here, you see that the Great Burger and More specification is available to everyone who has successfully logged into the dev portal. And if you want to restrict that, you can select the admin role here or the GS role or both. And only members of these roles would have access to the specification. Okay, and of course, the next question of Joe came right along. If you say we have developers and developers are members of roles, does that mean that I need to create each developer account manually? And I said, Joe, you have two options here. The first option is indeed that you create and maintain and approve each developer account manually. And the second option is that you set up the dev portal in a way that it allows a self onboarding service. So each developer can sign up by himself and gets automatically approved. 
Of course, you can maintain the developer accounts and if you need to, you can revoke an approval at any time. Let me give you a quick demo. I think the quick demo will make it a lot clearer. So, let's start our tour through the dev portal from the IAM admin portal. I'm already connected to the IAM admin portal and I've changed the workspace to the Global Summit 2020 workspace. On the left hand side, you see a navigator with different sections. Let's go to the Dev Portal section and click on Overview. And it tells me that the Dev Portal is currently disabled. So the first thing you have to do is to enable the Developer Portal. And you can do it directly from here by clicking on that button, Enable Developer Portal. The Dev Portal is now enabled. And it gives me the URL to access the dev portal and it tells me that authentication for the dev portal is enabled. So I pre-configured the dev portal a bit so that authentication is enabled. But let's click on the URL to access the dev portal. This brings us to the home page of the dev portal and you can either log in from here with valid username and password or you can create a developer account directly from here. So let's create a developer account. I click on create a developer account. It prompts me for my full name. So it's Michael Bram. My email address is michael.bram at intersystems.com. And we are asked to choose a secure password. So let's choose demo. And then we click on create account. Don't save that. This brings us to the dashboard of the developer portal. And at the top, you see a link to the catalog. So let's click on the catalog. And we see that currently there's one API available to me. That's the Great Burger and More Service API. So let's click on this API. This brings you directly to the documentation of that API. And on the left hand side, you see categories. So all the endpoints of this API are grouped by categories. So we have product related endpoints or we have card related endpoints. And here in the main area of the screen, you see a list overview of all available endpoints with a brief description. These are also grouped by the categories, products and cards. And if I click on an endpoint to get a more detailed view, it brings me to the detail documentation, detailed description of the get products endpoint. I can see that the HTTP get method is needed to call this endpoint. And it gives me the capability to test the endpoint directly from here. So if I click on try it out, I get a button execute. And if I click on the execute button, it calls out to the server with this URL here. And what you see here, the server response is a response that comes directly from the server. And I can see that currently there are only two products in my shop available, that's the German currywurst and the pizza salami. And it also gives me code samples or code snippets, how to call this endpoint from different environments. For example, if I want to call this endpoint from a JavaScript environment, it gives me a JavaScript code snippet, which demonstrates how to call this endpoint from JavaScript. This test feature also works for more complex endpoints. So if we go to the return the content of a particular card endpoint, I can see that this endpoint requires the post method. And this um, endpoint requires an input object. You have to pass the card ID of the card um, you want to see the, con the, 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 the content, um, you have to pass the card ID to the, to the endpoint in a JSON object. Um, 
And if you click on try it out, you can directly edit this JSON object from here. So for example, I want to see the contents of card 10,000. If I click on execute, it goes to the server and it gives me this card content for the card 10,000 here. I see there's only one item in the card. It's the German currywurst again. And um, yeah, that works great for all your endpoints. The dev portal gives you more information, more documentation on all, or of all the models that are needed in requests. For example, a rating request requires an object um, with four properties, so you can see that all directly from here. Let's go back to the IAM admin portal to see how you can configure a dev portal. Well, first step, we already did that. We have to enable the dev portal. Um, in the second menu here, the settings menu, you can enable authentication. Currently, basic authentication is enabled for our dev portal. There are other authentication options available, like key authentication, like OpenID Connect. The default is that authentication is disabled, but we have basic authentication enabled here. And if you scroll down here, you find another combo box, auto approve access. This is enabled in our case, and this allows us to create a developer account on the fly. So the developer can sign up for access to the developer portal by themselves and they get automatically approved. So there is no manual approval process necessary to approve a developer request. Let's go back to the appearance tab. Here you can change the look and feel or customize the look and feel of the dev portal so that it fits your needs. You can upload images or logos, you can change colors, you can change text fonts, etc. So let's try it. Let's go back to our developer portal. Let's go back to the catalog view. You see there's only a great burger and more service API. And if I go to the um, appearance tab here in the IAM admin portal and I select the borders and catalog preview icons here and say, okay, this is dark blue or should be dark blue and I click save changes. If I now go back to the developer portal and do a refresh of my page, I see that the icon here is now in dark blue. So you can customize the dev portal as you like. Developers. In the developer submenu, you see a list of approved developers here. Currently there's only one, that's just me. Um, but you could also see the revoked approvals or rejected requests. Or if you don't have the auto-approve process enabled, you would see the uh, request for approval here. Let's go to the permission entry. Here you can create roles. Currently we have two roles. We have the GS role, Global Summit, and an admin role for administrators. And you can assign developers to one or more roles. And then you can grant privileges to access resources in the developer portal to one or more roles. And only developers who belong to a particular role can access this content. So for example, if you go to the content section here, you see all the content that you can protect. And if you scroll down to the specification, area, I find my great burger and more JSON specification, and I can see that this checkbox, this is star, is checked, and that means that everyone who has successfully logged in has access to this specification. If I want to restrict that, I can do that by changing it and say, okay, only members of the admin role have access to this specification or I can at a second 
role, only members of the admin or GS role have access to this specification. So you can control who has access to the specifications and to the documentations. Last but not least, we find the editor here. And the editor allows you to change the content of the dev portal. And content can be content in the dev portal pages itself, or content can be a specification file. For example, here's the Great Burger and More service API. Um, if I change this file here and say, OK, it's a version 2020, and I click Save Changes, it directly updates the preview here on the right hand side. And if I go back to the developer portal and refresh the page and click on the API, it also updated the title here. So last but not least, how can I upload new specifications to the developer portal? And the editor is a tool you can leverage here as well, or you can use here as well. So simply click New File. It asks you for the file type. I want to add a new specification. And it asks me for a file path and file name. And I say, OK, it's the virtual summit. 2020.json specification. So now it gives me an empty JSON file or a, a, a template JSON file. I can add more content now to that file. And how do I now get the specification from my existing APIs? And I said earlier that Intersystems Iris provides the REST API that you can leverage here. And you can use any REST client you like. I use the Postman in my demo. And I already have the URL for that REST call um, typed in. So I now just click the Send button. It goes to my server and creates a specification from my existing API in a JSON format. So I simply copy it and go back to the developer portal and replace it. It replace my specification here with my specification. Let's add a title to it. So that's the virtual summit demo 2020. I click on save changes. Let's go back to the developer portal. Um, let's go to the catalog view, refresh the page, and my new specification shows up here. I can click on it. Joe, what do you think? Doesn't this look great? Wow, this looks great. Where can we learn more about this? There are other sessions on IM during this virtual summit or visit our learning service portal, learning.intersystems.com. There's a course, API Manager Introduction, or our developer community, community.intersystems.com is always a good resource. If you have questions, don't hesitate to contact me or connect with us. For now, I say thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of our virtual summit. Thank you.